Hi folks, let's look at how we can improve our user guides. The first is to consider the way we talk about users per se. I try to avoid that. I don't think anybody really likes me called a user. So I try to write it so that I'm saying, you know, you can do this or it's available for you to do that. Uh, so try to have a dialogue with the person reading it. Um, you know, it's a person, they have obviously feelings and in many situations we only read documentation as a last resort. We're trying to figure it out ourselves, but if we can't do it, then we open the manual. So just bear that in mind, that often people who are reading it, they're, they're in a hurry, they're stressed out, maybe people are you know, in pressurized situations, and really, quite often, it is really the last resort. I don't think anybody intentionally reads user guides to, to pass their time. Don't assume anything in the sense that, like, don't assume anything. Um, when you start the user guide, you need to put things in context. In other words, when you're describing different um, concepts in your documentation try and give people an example or introduce scenarios of where this may work for them and that kind of gives them a real world idea of how something could possibly work so try not to discuss only the abstract side of things but give real world examples and strive to be helpful um, the next thing is that most of the time what you're doing is you're discussing a potential problem the user is having and then you're trying to explain a solution to it and uh, a, a lot of user guides use procedures to explain how things work and the essence of it is to try to identify one problem and then have one procedure to, to resolve that. And by using that approach, one problem, one procedure, uh, it helps the reader kind of zero in on what they're trying to solve. And also when you're exporting your documentation to the internet, it, it makes it much cleaner for people to find where things are, but you can index it accordingly. Um, if you're going to put in code samples, um, highlight any prerequisites, highlight any kind of known issues, say if you're using this piece of code on a certain operating system, or highlight for the developer then what kind of um, expected output there, there may be. So as regards the steps themselves, what we're trying to do is explain the steps to, to achieve something to the user, the person, see I did it again, <laughs> but put them in the correct order. So there's no ambiguity as regards what they should do. Um, when we say remove waffle, what we mean here is that try to distill the text down to the bare bones, but so much so that they can still understand what they need to do, but make it kind of scannable so they can kind of scan through the steps. Because quite often what will happen is that the problem may be, say, on step four or five, and they can get their way through half the procedure. So structured accordingly. And also, at, you know, at the bottom of your procedures, it's good to, to link to kind of related topics, but be kind of judicious in the amount of links you put in there. I try to put in, say, three links at the bottom, like in a for more information section, but not more than that. As regards screenshots, you know, only put them in if they add value. You don't have to put in screenshots in the sense of, you don't need to jazz up a user guide, that's not its purpose. Um, but if you are going to put them in or they do add value, it's when you show something in action, in the sense of if you show something changing from one state to the next. So, for example, if somebody's doing something online, say, uh, you know, using banking software, and you want to show them a before and after uh, screen, that that's a good example of where you'd show that. But make sure that the, the fields are populated and um, with, with real data. The other thing, too, is you don't need to whole, show the screenshot of the whole page. It's fine just to crop it and kind of circle the area where the, 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 the critical thing is, is occurring. Um, as regards creating modular content, what that means is that you create something kind of in the anticipation that you will reuse it at a later date. Either you might put it out onto different platforms or it might go into different documentation. So you don't, it avoids rewriting everything from scratch every time. Um, and you know, the principle behind it really is to structure your information accordingly to allow you to create modular documentation. As regards online, you know, I, I think very few people I think really, really like to use PDFs. They're very clunky, they're very hard, they're often quite large. Um, if you can move things to the web, I think that's a real benefit to people. They can ac access it any time. And I find, for example, if I try to download PDFs, say, on my iPad, it often doesn't work or it crashes things, whereas on the web, you can read it and it's all there. But you need to write accordingly for the web and to, to, to cross-link between different sections. Um, when you're finished on a course, make sure you get it reviewed by offering it to different members of the team. Use the track changes and to avoid um, to avoid data pollution, make sure you remove um, redundant uh, versions of the documentation. 
particularly if you update something. So there's not different versions circulating out there. Um, and the final thing is that you got to test it at some point and you have to ask people out there if it works. And there's a few ways to do that. One is to always include an email in your documentation. So if they have an issue, if they find something wrong, they can email and get back to you. Uh, I try to keep an eye on forums because if if a certain issue keeps coming up and users can't figure out how to solve it, it probably means you haven't captured that in your documentation. It may be a known issue, but maybe you haven't written up how to resolve that correctly. And uh, another thing to do is send out surveys and ask your customers, what can you what can you improve? What can you change? How can you make it better? So I hope that helped. Um, if you have any questions about any kind of technical documentation, please put them below the video and I'll get back to you for sure. And if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to this channel or um, pop over to Clarity. So that's it. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.